Let's learn everything you need to know about the Adobe Animate Camera in about 10 minutes. Tip tut. Hello everybody and welcome back to TipTut and welcome to another Adobe Animate tutorial. Today I'm going to teach you all you need to know about the Adobe Animate camera in about 10 minutes or so. Um, we're going to go through a few key things this tutorial. We're going to go how to add a camera to a project, how to zoom, pan and rotate that camera, how to apply layer depth for parallaxing, so making your movement apply to the camera rather than to keyframes, how to lock and unlock layers to the camera, and how to apply filters and tints to the camera as well. Uh, all of this I'm gonna do with individual examples for you. So let's just jump right in. The first example is how to add your camera to a scene and to zoom pan and rotate it. So as you can see here, I have a very simple animation of this dancing man. Uh, it's just all wrapped up inside a graphic. It's you know only a few frames long and it just loops over and over again. On our main stage, the only layer we have is this guy here. So when we play through our animation, nothing much really happens. Now, to add a camera to your scene is very simple. You just need to press the shortcut button C or alternatively, you can click on this button here, add camera or the camera tool up in your tools palette like so. That will highlight your stage in a blue bounding box or whatever color your layer appears to be down here. And it will give you an additional set of controls on your screen, okay? You animate the camera in the same way that you animate anything in Adobe Animate. You do it with keyframes. So I'm gonna put a keyframe here on frame 20. And I'm gonna use this control down here to zoom in. Now I can click and drag to zoom in towards the right or zoom out towards the left. And you'll notice that it moves everything on my stage in relation to what I'm doing here. If I release, it goes back to the middle, allowing me to go further in, okay? Now, that is our zooming function, very simple. Now, if we look at our animation on frame 20, it's just gonna zoom in. On frame 40, we could drag backwards and have it zoom back out again so that our camera jumps back in and out as well. Now, if you were to add a classic tween, to these keyframes, you now have an animated camera zooming in and out. And at the same time, you can do all of your easing that you could do on normal animation to this one as well. For example, have the first section ease out, and then this section here, ease in, and you've got yourself a bouncing animation. Okay, that is zooming, very simple. Now, if you wanted to rotate your camera, let's say I'll put a keyframe here on frame 60, you just toggle to the rotation section on this control tool here and do the same thing. Twisting to the right will go anti-clockwise and twisting to the left will go clockwise. Again, if you release, you can continue to do so. Now, if I combined that with zooming in, you can see that when we go to classic tween, we zoom in and we rotate at the same time. It's gonna zoom in, zoom out, and then zoom in and rotate, okay? So that is how you pan, uh, that is how you zoom and tilt your camera, zoom and rotate. To pan something, you simply have your camera layer selected and any movement that you would usually do to drag stuff around your canvas will now instead drag the camera around. So I could position him on the left here, go to my next keyframe, position him over on the right, and go to my final keyframe and position his head sort of in the center of the frame. Just ignore the fact that my spotlight doesn't go far enough. And as you can see, we can now pan and zoom around. Not the most beautiful camera movement, but it definitely gets the point across. Okay, and moving on then, the next step is going to be how to use layer depth, okay? Now you can see here that I have this scene slightly more complicated than the last scene. I have six layers. On the first layer, my flowers here. On the second, this man looking out over the moon. On the third layer, these trees. The fourth, this hill. The fifth, that hill at the back. And on the sixth, the moon. If we see the only animation in this scene at the moment is our moon rising slowly above the uh, distance there. If we scrub back and forth, we can see that's everything that we've got going on. Now, if I were to add a camera to this scene, put a keyframe on my last frame here and just zoom in, maybe pan so that my moon is central and then create a classic tween. You can see that everything looks a bit flat as it moves, okay? And that's because there's only 
one object on here that has any layer depth. We've only told one object that needs to be further away from the actual camera, which is the moon layer here. You'll notice that the moon doesn't really grow in size as everything else scales up towards the camera. And that's because we've given the moon a layer depth and nothing else a layer depth. Now, what a layer depth means is how far away that object is from the camera virtually. So if you go to your window layer depth, you'll see something that looks like this. Now you'll see that my moon layer here has a figure applied to it. None of the other layers have any numbers applied to it at all. This blue triangle represents our camera and this bottom line of the blue triangle represents our focal point. This green line, which is why I've done it first, indicates where layer five is in relation to the front of the camera. So if this is the person standing behind the camera, the front of the camera is here. We can drag and move this moon about in the layer depth, which changes where it is on the stage. For example, if I put it back to 800, you'll notice it gets smaller because it's technically getting further away from the camera. Now, if you've already drawn all of your elements and you don't want them to um, change scale as you work, you can do that and still position them in the layer depth. I'm going to select my first layer here, which is my um, flowers. I'm gonna choose maintain size and I'm gonna push these into negative values, which puts them closer to the camera than everything else. So maybe negative 200, okay? I'll leave the man where he is. I'll pop the trees, maintain size. I'll put them on 200, okay? You'll notice that that has put the trees behind this hill because the layers here no longer dictate what's on top of each other. It is the layer depth which dictates. We'll fix that by clicking layer three, which is this hill, maintain size and popping that on 400, so 400 units away from the camera. Again here, maintain size and 600. So that pushes them all to the correct depth. If we were to look at this from the side, we would see all of these layers in different depths to the camera. Now, when we animate our scene, we get the parallaxing effect. Everything grows in relationship to its depth to the camera. You'll notice that these flowers disappear almost immediately, whereas the moon has hardly grown at all. Uh, and that's how you apply layer depths to your cameras. Up next, we've got the locking and unlocking to the camera option. You'll notice here that I've got a very simple, again, with layer depth, parallaxed video here. Uh, it looks like a kind of first person game where a guy is in a tunnel with some scary demons and he's moving towards them. But if this was a point of view um, piece of uh, animation here, his hands should really not move with the frame. They should stay where they are as if it's like a video game yeah, and he's running along. Now you can do this by locking and unlocking your layers to the camera. There is a default option to unlock and or attach or detach everything to your camera here. If you select that, and I scrub back and forth, you'll notice that nothing now moves along with the camera animation at all. If I click it again, everything moves. To simply lock a layer, you select the one layer you want, and next to your hide or, or lock um, properties, you've got this detach uh, un or, or attach, detach or attach um, option for the camera here, or the lock or unlock camera option. Now, when we scrub through, everything moves apart from our hands, which are locked to the camera. So you can think of this like you've attached physically the hands to the camera and they're moving along. That's why point of view is a good um, option here for showing what that might look like. Okay, the final step then is to go and show you how filters and tints work. We've got the exact same hit scene here now with our hands locked to the camera. And it's important to know that if you select your camera tool, you notice you've got the same color effects and filters you can apply to any um, frame or layer. For example, if I change the brightness all the way up to 100%, you'll notice the hands don't change at all, and that's because they are unlocked or unattached from the camera, okay? So what that means is anything that is unattached is not going to take any properties from the, from the camera, whether that's position, rotation, tilt, or color effects and tints. For example, if I added a filter here, like a glow filter, I made it um, bright red and really cranked it out. Make it white then instead. Um, you'll notice that everything is glowing and cranking out on here, apart from the hands which are detached from the camera. Just an important note, if in case you're wondering why something like that isn't working the way you intended. Okay, so you can see very simply there, everything you need to know about using the camera within um, Adobe Animate, very simple to use. Add a camera to your scene, keyframe the camera, pan, tilt, rotate to your heart's content, 
and you've finished your work with cameras in Adobe Animate. Very simple. Thank you very much for watching everybody. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, please make sure to like, comment, subscribe, make sure you've got notifications turned on for this channel. And if you really enjoyed it, please consider becoming a member of the Tip Top Zone by clicking the join button below. It really helps keep the channel alive and healthy throughout these uh, difficult times. Thank you very much for watching everybody. I really do appreciate it. And I'll see you next time for another episode of Tip Top. An undescribably large thank you to my level two members, Unknown Ghosts, WN62, Anonymous, and Brew Draws. Thank you very much. You're helping to keep me going here on TipTap. Remember to subscribe for more tips, tricks, and tutorials. Thanks for watching.